Ladies and gentlemen, it is your man out of Japan, Jay Contra here with a new setup because we are going into the weeds about power adapters, folks. There's a little bit of a controversy online about whether or not you can properly plug in your Japanese N64 power adapter into the wall in the United States or North America generally. And are you going to end up frying your system in the long run? And I've got two power adapters in front of me. One is Japanese and one is North American. And I'm going to talk about the differences and we're going to talk about what it means for your system. I need to preface this with I am not an expert in, in electronics. I took physics like 15 years ago and I learned about like ohms and volts and things. But someone, it, please correct me in the comments when I make a mistake and I'm sure there will be plenty of them. But I think I understand the general concepts and I hope this video teaches you something about using your Japanese Nintendo 64 in the United States and I guess vice versa. You can see here we've got two power supplies. On the left, we have the Japanese power supply, and on the right, we have the North American power supply. You can see here that on the left, this is at least in theory, this is what they have on the power brick. They have that the Japanese power supply is supposed to take 100 volts out of the outlet. That's 100 volts is the standard voltage from an outlet in Japan. On the right, we have the 120 volt rated power supply because in North America, at least in the United States, as far as I know, we get 120 volts out of our wall sockets here. Now, sometimes these numbers will lie to you. I have seen some pretty good evidence that on the Sega Saturn, at least for NTSC consoles in the Sega Saturn verse, the power supply is exactly the same. You can run 120 or 100 volts into a NTSC Sega Saturn and come out with the same results. You're not gonna fry your system even over a long period of time, regardless of whether you're plugging it into a North American or a Japanese outlet. But on the back of a Saturn console in Japan, it will say it takes 100 volts. And in North America, it'll say it takes 120 volts. But the power supply on the inside is the same. And now following that with the N64, it looks like these are the exact same power supply. Now the N64 actually has a, a few different revisions of its power supply, but luckily enough, I have a North American power supply and a Japanese power supply that have the same boards. And if you look at them, and I've inspected these a little bit, they seem almost exactly the same all most and that would make you think that oh you can just plug in your japanese power supply into a north american outlet and you would be perfectly fine and that's that's possible that's possible again i'm not an expert but i want to tell you about one key difference and you can see there are a little bit of component differences like this one i believe this is it's uh, it's a special type of capacitor um, it's like a safety capacitor, I believe it's called. You can see this one here has like a black box. This one here is like a small little, I, I don't even know how to describe that. Um, everything else seems roughly the same. Some of the, I think the voltage regulators are technically different models or, or are from different manufacturers. But I think at least in terms of anything that's consequential, they're essentially the same. You can see the... I think this is the transformer here. Um, I actually don't know what this is. <laughs> Pretty much the only thing that I know. I, I know what a resistor is. I know what a, a, um, a capacitor is. That's about it. But I'm, I'm kind of making educated guesses on the other parts. But there is one key difference between these two power supplies, and you may have seen it already, and this is really going to matter when you're trying to power up your system in the United States. And you can see it's here. You can see here on the left, on the Japanese power supply, there's a blank space. Or sorry, yeah, on the left. On the right here, this North American power supply has a resistor in it. And I think I, I put this into a, like a resistance calculator on the internet, and this is a 27.5 ohm resistor, I think. Someone who's good at electronics, please correct me. What can we conclude if, if, and I'm just, I'm just shooting this out th here, there, because I've not seen anyone crazy enough to do this on the internet. I am, as far as I know, the only one to actually post the difference between a North American and a Japanese power supply uh, on the internet. So I could be very wrong here. I'm just spitballing here. But if the only difference between these power supplies is this resistor, that means that if you're plugging a Japanese power supply into the wall to power your Japanese N64 in the United States, you may be causing problems for yourself down the line because what the resistor does, 
what this does is effectively, and I've seen things that maybe, maybe I'm saying this wrong, but effectively what this does is drop the input voltage from the North American outlet so that it works with the rest of the components. Because basically, in order to do this as cheaply as possible, Nintendo was very, they were good at choosing the internal of the components, but they wanted to keep manufacturing costs as low as possible. So it doesn't make sense to, you know, make two different boards that take two different voltages. Instead, what you're going to do is you're going to make everything as possible the same, except all you need to do is drop the voltage on your American system. So you're going to have the same board, but when you have a higher voltage in North America, you're going to have that resistor so that you drop the overall voltage that's going in. And that way, the current that is going into your system eventually is going to be the proper current. Because if, as far as I can tell, every N64, no matter the region, even including PAL, they take the same like the same output voltage from the power adapter. They take the same output voltage and output current. It's just this power supply is adapting the the current and the voltage from your wall adapter. Now, I'm hoping what I'm saying is making sense. Someone in the comments, please correct me. But what's going to happen is if you're using a Japanese power supply in your either um, Japanese system or North American system, but if you're plugging your Japanese power supply into your wall here in the United States, you could, over the course of time, end up frying probably your power supply. Your system is probably going to be safe in the long run. It's You're just going to be frying your power supply because it's going to be taking a higher current because you don't have that resistor to lower the voltage because of Ohm's law, V equals IR, or you know whatever ratio thereof. The North American power supply is just the Japanese power supply with a resistor on it. So with higher resistance to adapt for that 120 volts versus the 100 volts. Now, I don't know if this makes sense to anybody. It barely makes sense to me. But the, the conclusion here, the conclusion here and what I'm hoping you take away from this video is that it's probably not safe in the extreme long run for both your power supply and your system to be using a Japanese power supply without a step down converter, which is a whole different thing um, that I've talked about in other videos. It's not exactly the safest thing for your console in the long run to be using a Japanese power supply and plugging it into the wall here in North America because it's lacking that resistor, meaning it's taking, it's taking a higher voltage resulting in a higher current that's gonna be flowing through here and could be messing with the transformer. It could be messing with um, the voltage regulators here. Allegedly, um, a lot of electrical components are designed to have a higher tolerance, to have a certain percentage tolerance um, for, in terms of voltage fluctuations. But we're talking about 20% here, folks. And I know, you know, it's, it's a pretty small resistor. It's probably all it's doing is just building up heat over time and that, but instead of the resistor taking the heat, which is what it's designed for, instead that current is going to be creating more heat throughout these um, electrical components and that could spell trouble in the future. But then again, you've had people using Japanese N64 adapters in the United States for probably 10, 20 years now. And those systems seem to be doing okay. And a lot of, you know, a lot of these fuses, I think you can see here, um, the fuses on these things are rated for like 250 volts. Um, that means that even, you know, it's taking the North American voltage fine, but you know, again, with these systems, it's usually, you know, 99% of the time, the things that's going to kill these is not just a single, uh, stray voltage that is going to fry the system. It's going to be repeated long-term degradation that's going to kill these systems. And look, these systems are not going to live forever, but we can at least try and take care of them as best as we can. So someone in the comments, please correct me if I'm wrong, but the only difference I can tell between the Japanese power supply on the left and the American power supply on the right is this resistor right here that is meaning that it's taking the 120 volts from the American wall socket and stepping it down or whatever you want to call it so that all the other components can be the same and it will have an acceptable level of current. You're not getting that in your Japanese power supply and maybe in the long term, you may be paying the price for that.
So I would suggest if you want to plug either a Japanese or North American system into the wall here in America, just buy an American power supply. I don't think they're even that expensive these days. So just buy an American power supply and you will be fine. So this is a late night video, folks. I really had to get this out there because I, I love opening these things up and only understanding about 10% of them. But hopefully this was useful to you. I've been your man out of Japan, Jay Contra. I stream every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over at twitch.tv slash jaycontra. I'm hoping to do more of these things live on Twitch where we just open stuff up and we take a look at it and we you know, try and use our best judgment to determine uh, what these electrical components even do. <laughs> Once again, that's twitch.tv slash jaycontra streaming every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I've been your man out of Japan, Jay Contra. Thanks for watching and mahalo.